This is a Corning hot plate. It's also a stir plate. If you want to heat it, you turn the hot on, the heat. If you want it to stir, you turn the stir in. You have a little metal bar that's coated in plastic. Inside, there's a motor, and when you turn it on, it magically spins. It's good for stirring up mixtures when you're trying to dissolve things. Here's electronic balance. Flynn makes this one. To weigh something, you pull the top up. You push on, and you let it zero out. You have to be patient here. It'll finally turn to zero. If you got stuff on there, you can take the metal right up and wipe it off. Don't wipe it while it's on the scale. Take it off the scale first. And then you can push zero to make sure it goes to zero. On the side, you find information like maximum capacity of 210 grams for this one and an uncertainty of 0 0.01 grams. Above is an order number that is be, that will be important when we have materials list. Here we have three burners. This is the classic Bunsen burner. It's got a simple collar, super inexpensive, and just with an eighth of a turn, it goes from full open to full close. This is a Mecker burner, M-E-K-E-R. It burns really hot and low flames, and if it wasn't so stuck, you could also open and close it there. This is like a carburation. Here is a Terrell burner, two R's, two L's. And uh, here's the gas adjustment on the bottom. And then to X, and you can adjust it there at the spigot. But we need to close these things off to start them and open them once they get lit. So here we have to close the opening to let air or not let air in. And now we're opening it to let air in. But you have to screw it around multiple times multiple 360s for it to actually open up, unlike the Bunsen burner. These look alike, but they're not. The one on the right is an Erlenmeyer flask, spelled with four E's, also called a conical flask. It's a 251 here. This one is called a filter flask. It looks pretty much like an Erlenmeyer flask, but there's a glass spigot off to the side, which can plug into this rubber hose attached to the faucet, and once you attach it uh, and you turn the water on, it causes a vacuum, which will uh, be a vacuum inside the glassware. And then the top will be a filter. So this is a plastic filter for it. The filter lays flat. It needs to be the same size as that. And once you pour your solids in there, the liquid will come out the bottom and the solid will stay in the filter. These are graduated cylinders. This is a 10 milliliter one, and the one to the right is a 100 milliliter. The 10 milliliter is good to the tenth, and the 100 is good to the single, or maybe the 0.5. They're graduated because they have multiple lines on here. This one is a glass funnel, and this is a powder funnel. It's a powder funnel because it's a big hole, not because it's plastic. And the glass one, you can see if you put a powder in there, it'd probably get stuck in there. This is an evaporating dish. It's a Pyrex one or a glass one. You can heat these up. This is a triangular file. It's because it's a file and it's triangular. It's good for scoring glass tubing, and you can snap it on the edge of the table and then fire it and create all sorts of glassware you need. This is a ring stand with a burette clamp and a burette, not a beret, a burette. Uh, if you look closely, they actually measure uh, upside down. So here we can see the 17s on the bottom, the 12s on the top. So if it's just above the 14, it's actually 13 something, not 14 something. So that's something kind of unique to this. This is a watch glass. It looks like a huge contact lens. You can put it on top of an evaporating dish or something like that, and you don't have to worry about stuff spewing out. This is a utility clamp. It is just that, it has multiple uses. Here's an evaporating dish that is a uh, ceramic one. Also, it can heat to very high temperatures, also very breakable. These are volumetric flasks. They're volumetric because they measure one volume. There's a, a single line on there, and that's what it measures. 
It tells you the uncertainty on the bottle. They're used for making solutions. You put some distilled water in there, put in the mass of whatever you want to dissolve, dissolve it and fill it up. But they're made for making solutions, not for storing chemicals. So once you make them, you move them away. These are pipettes. The two on the left are volumetric because they measure one volume. They have one line. The one on the right is a graduated pipette. A pipette is simply a glass tube. And to, in order to pull the liquid up into the pipette, we're going to use this pipette bulb or maybe this pipette pump, the green one. Uh, the green one can pull up 10 mils while the red one can pull up 25 mils. This is a hot mitt or a hot grip. You can grab onto it and you can also make a puppet show. So that's kind of fun. And if you have a hot beaker, you can grab it. it freaks you out, but it's no problem. Here's a glass stir rod. It's just for that, for stirring. And it has a rubber policeman on the back of it. A rubber policeman is like a spatula. You can pull, you can wipe all the solids out of here. Here's a ring stand with a ring. It's got a ceramic triangle because it's ceramic and it's a triangle. And those things can get really hot with no problem. Sitting on top of it is a crucible with a crucible lid. They also can get very hot. We will use these uh, several times throughout the year. This is a scoopula. It's spelled scoop and then U-L-A, scoopula. It is the most useful for the money. This is a spatula and has a spoon on the end. And they work well too, but I still like the scoopula better. It's cheaper, but it actually functions better. Here are two thermometers. One of them is mercury in it, and one of them is a spirit one. The one on the right is mercury, and mercury is a very dangerous element. It doesn't go away. It will evaporate, and so we don't really like using these, even though they're really good thermometers. The one on the left, if you happen to break it, you just sweep up the glass and throw it into the glass dispenser. We have a special place to put broken glass, uh, which is very important. We don't put it in the trash can. We don't want to hurt our custodial workers who work so hard around here to make the place look good. So we'll just stop it in there. Things happen. Things get broken. Uh, not a big deal. This is a disposable uh, pipette. Uh, it's good for sucking up little liquids and dropping them off. They're very useful. They don't measure anything, but they're good for transferring. Here's a test tube rack with a bunch of test tubes. Over here are some beakers. People always like to make solutions in them and think they're very precise, but they're not. This one measures 100 mils, even though it only shows 80 on the right side. That's the way the beakers typically work. So it says 100 here, but it only measures up to 80 because there's room at the top. It does say it's plus or minus 5%, which would be five milliliters. This one is says 500 milliliters so you probably think it's a 500 milliliter beaker but it's not it's actually a 600 milliliter beaker it just ha goes up to 500 and there's room at the top it is also good to five percent five percent of 600 is going to be 30 so it's only good to 30 milliliters higher or lower than you're measuring beakers are not good for making precise solutions here's a mortar and pestle it's good for grinding up solids that have stuck together. Uh, it's also good for herbs and things like that when you're cooking in the kitchen. Um, so sometimes they get the chemicals get stuck. Here is a test tube brush or a beaker brush, depending on the size of it. It's good for scrubbing the insides of glassware with soapy water. This is a beaker tong. The beaker tongs contain uh, plastic on the end, so you don't have the metal on glass. It also means you can't heat them up very high or they start smoking and burning. This is a very useful tool. It's just tongs. Uh, they kind of bend down when you do it right. Uh, if you turn it upside down, it's really kind of awkward. But we use tongs a lot. Uh, just got to be careful about transferring things. that will slip out. And finally, this is filter paper. It's a round paper uh, piece of paper. It's good for filtering just like you would coffee. Uh, it filters out solids and it's for a gravity filtration. I hope you've enjoyed the video.